Hey, folks, here we are. We're another Belly Up podcast. And I'm so excited because we're at Woody's right now. Um, Miles, how do you feel? Which, which I know you like that name. I'm right. very excited about it, folks. How excited? Very excited. If I am, let's just say, never mind. It's a very appropriate name for this situation is what you're saying. That's how excited you are. Yeah, because yeah. I like woodpeckers. Okay. And Woody is the name of my favorite woodpecker. Miles, I do have a question for you. <clears throat> what is your Midwest pet peeve? Midwest and, and, pet peeve. And while you're thinking of it, I'll give you mine. Okay, so you're at a bar, you're at a party, all right, and you bring up the fact that you caught a fish or that you know of fish existing in the world. And someone says, oh, yeah, fish? Well, hang on, I, I got to... Let me show you the, uh, what I caught the other day. Hang on. And then they open up their phone. Now, look, seeing fish pics is not my pet peeve. My pet peeve is when they're we're mid-conversation. They're like, hang on, I'll find it. And then they must go through years <laughs> of photos. It takes like 45 minutes. Yeah, and yeah. you're just standing there. I'm like, oh, what the hell am I? And, and they're barely listening to you, so you can't have a conversation. with. Hey, here, you try it with me. Uh, talk about well, fish. So here I got a tip on how to fix this, Charlie. Well, you you be me. I'll be the guy doing it, and you fix oh, it. Oh, yeah. I was up in Sheboygan, and I caught a nice old perch up there. No kidding. Perch? Oh, yeah. Hang on. I caught a perch, too. It was the size of I I, I chew you not. It was about, uh, about 16-inch perch. Biggest one I ever caught. Hang on. Let me find the picture for you. Here, I'm going to turn away from you so you can't see the dirty photos on my phone. Okay. Hey, that's not it. Oh, yeah. No, no. Hang on now. Uh, oh, you know what? I think it was from what day was that? Hey, on what day were we over in Wapaka? Ah, uh, all right. Now, so it was last year then. Is it you got it on there? No, it's coming. It's coming. It, should I? I, I kind of uh, got to take a leak. Should no, I go no, do no. That I'll get it. 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 Oh, you gotta go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you gotta go, take a leak. Take a leak. I'll get it by the time you get back. And it goes on and on like this yeah, for, a for, while. for a long time. That actually I, happened to me in uh, South Dakota when I was pheasant hunting. Yeah. It wasn't a fish pick, but a guy told me that he had a, a Sebring convertible. <laughs> and I he was bragging about that. Yeah. Well, no. So he was so he was saying that he had a convertible and I jokingly was like, what is it? A Sebring? Uh, and he was like, yeah, it is. <laughs> And, you know, because I'm thinking in my head, like, Michael Scott thinks his Sebring is yeah. like a luxurious convertible. Yeah. And he took 45 minutes to find it. To find the picture yeah, of his and, convertible? And Ryan, guy who works for me, can confirm this story. He was there, too. And, what what uh, were you guys doing while he was looking for it? We were just drinking, you know, and then he didn't talk for 45 minutes. And then all of a sudden he found it and it wasn't that good of a photo. So, but regardless, I got a tip for you. If they got an iPhone... All you got to do is type. There's a search bar. You just type in fish and it'll pull up all your fish pics. What the fuck? All right, Come let's on. see if it works. No way, fish. Did it? What the frick, dude? Look at all these fish pics. Look how easy that was. I just <laughs> solved your pet peeve. Dude, do you want to see this trout I caught? Yeah. Look at that. That is a golden uh, trout. And them, them are rare. That was up in the mountains that I caught that. Look Pretty at nice. that. You want to see a muskie I caught? Okay, so look at that's my brother's walleye. Look how tiny it is compared to. Ooh. Look at that. That was my dad's muskie, my cousin's bass. Uh, I don't know where I got that perch. See, we just eliminated oh, your look pet peeve. Look at that. Look wow. at that. I, that's a nice, that's a nice smallie, that's dude. That's Charlie and his element right there. Oh, yeah. God, I, oh. I caught that first cast, dude. Are you First happy cast. that you don't got to deal with that anymore now? All you got to do is say, hey, just search fish at the top. It'll pop up. <sighs> so you're yeah. welcome for eliminating your pet peeve. I mean, I'm almost sad now because that now was you have such nothing a to complain about. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's your pet peeve, Miles? So I would say my biggest Midwest pet peeve is when someone buys a round of shots mm -hmm. and it's not that I, you know, I love doing a round of shots with people, but they always, when they tend to pick a shot that no one really likes, 
Rumplemans. Yeah, stuff like that. Just give me something that straight down the middle. I also am not a big like straight tequila shot guy. Any tequila? I mean, if it's nicer and fancier, yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. doesn't taste like tequila. I no, I, I'm with you. It's tequila shots that taste like tequila, which is the problem. The Welsh don't don't order a round of shots and have it be the nastiest. Yeah, shit I, I think got. it's for a group of people. If you like that, go ahead. But if for a group of people, I think that just getting like something that's also maybe a little bit fruitier or got a little more sugar in it usually plays over pretty well oh. you know like you're doing a chuck norris shot there's some other stuff mixed into it you're now, one of those i will do a whiskey shot straight though don't get me wrong okay. i like a good whiskey it's more like the tequilas and the, you know um i i, I honestly don't really like it when when people buy shots for, or when, just in general well i i yeah because it's well you're uh, 36 i can't handle it yeah and i'm like if 30, i wanted a shot i would have gotten a shot by now i guarantee you i'm this isn't gonna go over well tomorrow and i'm gonna sit here and have to pretend and then if you don't take it they're like oh you're a bitch da, da, da. i'm like yeah i am you know my liver don't work good i'm old Get over it. The one time, though, I did. It was kind of an off the wall shot for me. I don't have I don't live in Wisconsin, so it wasn't as much. But remember, we were doing bellied up in Milwaukee on your birthday and everyone yeah. got a blackberry brandy shot. <laughs> that was, oh, I, I like that one. Though. Now, I will say I will take one of those shots. Yeah. Those shots put you in a different place mentally. I think they have some hallucinogens in them or something. How if you get a shot you don't like? I'm not somebody who treats alcohol like it's, you know, the host in church or something. You have to consume it. Oh, I, I'll, I'll take it. OK, I mean, I, that's just disrespectful. See, that's, so I'm not that way. I don't really care. And if it's the end of the night and people bring shots over and I don't want to take it, I'm not friggin taking it. Yeah, I, Charlie's now in the bathroom for 20 minutes. Yeah, I know. So sometimes I'll do this. <laughs> sometimes I'll be like, yeah. And, uh, you know, you, how you the Joker actually does it. throw it over your shoulder. Uh, if I'm outside. Yeah. Well, yeah. If I'm outside a thousand percent because no one's looking. Other times I will just give it to somebody else or just be, you know, well, I'm now I'm, every time we're doing shots together, I'm going to keep an eye out for you and I ain't going to let it pass. If you and I are doing shots together, it's because I want to do shots. But That's probably true. I'll, yeah. Yeah. It's it's just when when, uh, you know, you can get 10 people coming up to you in a night with uh, with shots. I'm like, I I'm old that guys. Is one thing I had to learn as I started doing, uh, you know, content, you start getting more followers and you meet. And people who whole, follow yeah. you at the bar. When I first started, I would accept everything. And I had to learn the hard way that it's okay to say no once in a while. Because yeah. otherwise, you are a puddle at the end of the night. And then your next day, you got to get up and do podcasts with Charlie. And you're a POS. And it just doesn't go well. So, yeah, it's uh, one of the unfortunate parts of what we do, Charlie, is we got to say no once in a we while. We got to say no once it's in a while. It's sad. But I'll take a beer. Can we get a shot of Rumplemans over here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we take some yeah, callers? That sounds good. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we chit chatting with today? Hi, my name is Anne. Anne? Yes. Hi, Anne. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm sitting here at the bar, Woody's to be specific, with my good buddy, Miles. And uh, we're hoping you'll belly up to the bar with us and uh, tell us what's on your mind. Absolutely. All right. I kind of have a two-part question for you guys. Yeah, we can handle so we'll two start parts. With... All right. Okay. How would you advise a woman in her mid-30s trying to find a decent man in this day and age? Ah, you know, we get this call a lot. We, I, yeah. I'm starting to think if someone and has has the real answer for this, call. they can make a lot of money, Charlie. Yeah, I know. If I, I, we were talking not too long ago, Ann, about doing a a, a bellied up dating app, you know, um, or live dating, speed dating at one of our shows. Yeah, because we yeah, you, I go speed dating. We're getting a lot of these. Um, well, let's first start with what have you tried? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Dating apps, uh, they can be quite creepy. Uh, 
going out to bars, meeting people, it's kind of hit and miss. You have more people that are in their late 30s, or sorry, late 20s. So let's see, dating apps, uh, those can be a little bit weird. Not, you know, your best choice for dating. Most men nowadays aren't really looking for anything serious on dating apps. So that kind of leaves the bars. And where I live, um, it's a lot of 20-year-olds versus, uh, you know, 30-year-olds. Yeah, where do you live? Uh, New Jersey. Uh, Not far from the city. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So those meeting in person and meeting online haven't worked. I don't know what's left. Well. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, meeting in person. (laughs) Me. Uh, Thanks for the advice, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll talk to you soon. No. I think you're screwed. No, I'm just kidding. Now, what? what, what can, let's let's. You know, now we can get a little bit more customized with your situation. Well, what are you well, looking for? Hold on, for? Charlie. I think we gotta. If you are gonna go uh, hunt, hunting for pheasant, yeah, are you gonna go to Manhattan, New York? No. To hunt for pheasant. No, um, but she's in New Jersey. No, I know, but what I'm and saying is you would go to South Dakota and you would go to a field and there would be pheasant there. That's you're true. You're saying you're going to bars and there's a bunch of 20-year-olds there. You need to find the bars with mid-30-year-olds at. Yeah. You know where any of those are? Uh, yeah, but then you have the problem of uh, it's mostly married men. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Mm. Well, is that a problem for you? <laughs> uh, yes, it oh, is. Okay, good. That was a test, and <laughs> no, you passed. I do not date married men. That was a test, and you passed. Nice work. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, where are you? Where, where are you from originally? Kansas. You're from Kansas. So you're looking for maybe a Midwest guy, potentially. Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, now here's a, here's a good tip. You should Google what is the Packers bar in New Jersey, and then uh, you could find yourself a nice Midwestern uh, fella there. And All right, let's see. I can do that right now. Yeah, because you got Packers game coming up uh, this weekend at the time of this filming. I know this is coming out later, but you could get yourself, or if you're a Kansas fan, you know, growing up in Kansas, the, the Jayhawks, maybe they have a Jayhawks bar. You can find someone with that local connection you know i think the other th- other thing you do is there's a lot of married men at the bar just start uh you know when someone is missing a dog and they put up flyers all over town and then the number thing that you can just pull off the thing you got to start stapling that to the wall and saying that only single guys only and oh. then have your take a number they can take your number right off of the wall on the piece of paper. Miles, that's a brilliant idea. Uh, Treat yourself like a missing dog. Yeah, yeah. You, you, or Miles, or a, or a nice used boat. You know. Yeah. And um, I don't love using wow. the word use. Wow, okay. No, <laughs> no. Wanna, and know. and I didn't mean it like that. Jesus, Charlie. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> what I mean is nobody's selling a used boat at the bar. Or nobody's selling a new boat at the bar. You know, that would be a boat dealer. Okay. Yeah. And that would be weird. That would be even weirder if I said, and find a a, a, a dealer for dating. Yeah. Right. So, and by the way, both of you should be ashamed of yourselves. There are a lot of good used boats out there. So that's not an insult at all. We, you know? Wait, we didn't have anything against the used boat. It was the fact that you were calling me a used boat. I think it's like, yeah, that really was the tough funny. look. No, but why are you insulted by that? Because the, the used boats are really nice, you know. So it was a compliment. I think he was more insulted than I was. I think this is what we call the old backpedal by Charlie. No, here. no, you guys should be backpedaling, insulting used boats. I mean, used <laughs> boats are fantastic, um, and they, they, the 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 you we're all used. You know, ever since we came out the deal when we were born, we've been used. So uh, you anyways. could also I mean, you could. So you've tried online. You've tried in person. I think you need to go the traditional marketing route. <clears throat> I think you got to start mail. You 
d- doing uh, boots on the ground, the missing dog, missing love is what I would call it, the missing love sign. Mm. Put a photo of yourself on there, the numbers they can take, and then just start maybe investing in mailers that you just send in the mail to different households. I like where you're going and, with and this, on, Miles. And on the mailer, it says... You know, are you looking for love or know someone who's looking for love? Because if Uh they get a thing in the mail and it's like, you know, uh, love piece of mail that comes in, the wife's going to be mad at the husband if you said it to a house that's married. But if it said, or you know someone who's looking for love, that blanket across the board she'd be like oh hon isn't isn't tom single now you know and that's how it would start and i like where you're going with this traditional advertising have you ever thought about a billboard Ann? yeah we know a guy oh my god no <laughs> are you sure no, okay. we would love to sponsor a billboard for you you pick the city and miles and i will pay for it yeah you you send us okay. a picture, a JPEG. We'll put you on a billboard. Where do you want to live? All right, but then you, you, uh, you know, you guys can pick in New Jersey for me. How about that? North Jersey, somewhere in North Jersey, somewhere in North but, Jersey. Okay, so she is on board. If, with this. Okay, if, if, but if you guys saw this advertisement, let's see, on a billboard, or if you know, say, I walked up to you in a bar and handed you my, call it like a dating resume. How likely are you to actually call me? If you walk into a bar and hand us a resume? <laughs> yeah, like a dating resume. Well, you know, we, didn't, walk we, didn't, dog. we never suggested that at all. <clears throat> well, you, you suggested a mailer, Miles, so that might be what you Yeah, thinking. it's just saying, hey, I'm looking for love. Yeah. Um... I, yeah. Okay, but what if what if this? Because Miles, we have so many singles that call this. What if we pick a single per like quarter, and it's the bellied up featured single, and then they find love that way, and it's just by us buying them a bi- a, a billboard, and it's you know, and and we, we so okay, so we have a billboard. You're cruising down the road. What are the three like bullet points you're gonna put on that? What do you like to do? Uh, let's see. I have two dogs, so hiking. Camping. Um, I probably have to think of something else. The beach, the lake. I, kind of all three together, though. Okay. Yeah. Outdoorsy. Outdoorsy. Just, it's better yeah, in outdoorsy. marketing campaigns if you just have one thing to focus on, too. True. True. Do you love the outdoors? And then, well, it's, do we got a gal for you? And it's a pick with you and your your dogs. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I mean, you might be onto something. I think so. You know. I mean, I, I'll tell you what, them dogs are a good draw, too, you know? I mean, you're you're obviously a, a great draw yourself, but I'm just saying dogs are nice <laughs> added added benefit for dog lovers, especially yes. what species dog you got going? Uh, cattle dog in a lab. Cattle dog in a lab. That's cool. Well, I tell you what, um, you take a picture or you got a good picture with you and your pooches, you send it over to us. Um uh, what's the email, Jared? Uh, Bellyduppod at gmail.com. Bellyduppod at gmail.com. You think about this, Ann, if, if you're interested. Okay, we're, we'll look at billboards. Um, so I've been thinking about this resume thing. It kind of sparked an idea. Oh, good, Miles. That's so, good. I mean, we're I, this is a free-thinking, spitballing session here. We're idea machines over here. You, you know, you, you can accept right. it or you can send it right back. Yeah. I need you to get into as many job interviews as possible. And you, your whole goal is that you're just trying to find love in these job interviews. And, you know, usually say a line like, you know, if this doesn't work out, you're kind of cute. Would love to take you out sometime. Could try it that way, a little unconventional. That's not a because if you idea. say that, one, you're not getting the job. <laughs> yeah, you know, which is what you want because you already have a job. And two, it's like you actually get to go on dates every week because you're just they're not job interviews, they're dates, speed dating. And then there is going to be maybe one out of twenty that will take you up on the date. Yeah, I think you're going back to your speed dating idea though. Exactly. Oh, New form of speed <clears throat> dating. Oh, hang on, Miles. Yeah. Hang on. Ann has two dogs. And how many dog parks are you going to on a weekly uh, basis? None anymore because of the respiratory virus that's going around in animals. 
Oh, for frick's sake. What? Do they well, have I'll just COVID throw a now? mask on that doggy. Yeah, yeah put, put the masks on your dogs. And and also, yeah. ah, geez, when the hell did that happen? Yeah, okay. Uh, a couple months ago. All right, so dog parks are closing down? Uh, they're not closing down. I just choose not to take my nose. I don't get sick. Ah, respectable. I yeah, it is respectable. All right. Well, there goes that idea. Well, I, th- I mean, this is an approach we've never taken on this podcast. We got a lot of people looking for love, but I think the traditional marketing way could be the way, Charlie. I think so. And you got to send us a picture of you and your pooches. If you can't take them to dog parks, we got to find a, a nice bubble for your dog uh, with, with another fella, you know, and, and maybe his. All dog. right. Done. OK. What do you think of those ideas? I like it. I am not opposed to them. Okay. That is a big surprise to me. I thought yeah. that this was not going to be something you're interested in, but here we are, Charlie. Wait, why do you think that, though? I mean, women are, I wouldn't say desperate, but it's its a lot harder to meet men nowadays, especially after COVID and with dating apps. So why, why do you think that's? Well, I just thought something that we wouldn't you, be. Well, no, for. no, just you slapping your face on a billboard saying you're looking for love. I didn't know if you were going to go with. I don't. It doesn't matter, a guy or a gal. I don't know if they were, but I like it. <laughs> you know what? And would I see for it myself? Probably not. But if you guys were doing it, oh why yeah, not? oh yeah, we, yeah, we, we, got we you absolutely here. would do it. And and you know what? I I know what you're uh, saying. Um, with this uh, and the, the dating apps are really make it a very impersonal situation and everyone's like next best thing, next best thing. You know, it's a weird it's a weird uh, thing we've set up for ourselves. So, you know, we're just trying oh, are to you experiencing it, too. <clears throat> oh, I've experienced it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I'm divorced. Uh, Miles probably told you I did a thousand not bring times. That up. I think um, Miles always brings it up. Yeah, he does. Anytime he's feeling sad about himself, he's like, wait, Charlie's a bigger failure than me. And then um, <laughs> <clears throat> reminds me of it. So um, I feel for you. We feel for you. And we think we're trying to change things and bring it more in person. We're going to put just your phone number up there on that billboard. Just just think about all the things we're doing for the dating scene now, Charlie. We're going to do live speed dating sessions. We're going to be have a billboard program, it sounds like. I think we're doing good stuff for the dating community. Revolutionary, Miles. We're mm-hmm. taking it away from the applications and back IRL. We're telling people to touch grass and get some ass, you know? Yeah. So That is our motto. <laughs> we yeah. just decided. All right. Well, cool, Ann. Well, send us that picture, and we'll, we'll find you a billboard. Well, oh, thanks, guys. All right. Bye-bye now. <clears throat> what would you think, Charlie, if you're driving down the road and you saw an ad for just dating a gal? I mean, Miles. You'd have to at least see what all the hoopla is about. Yeah, I guarantee you that she's going to find some love through that. Now, the question is. She can vet him. <laughs> no, but think of, you know, you put out a misconnections or looking for love on Craigslist. We yeah. should have brought up Craigslist. That was dumb <sighs> of us. Damn it. But. You get a lot of uh, unworthy candidates. Oh, I feel sure. Like, in that. Oh, sure. So we'll have to set up some sort of vetting system. Ann doesn't have hey, more. Miles will be the vetting system. Yes, we I will. think on this podcast, we the, the when when it happens, we'll take the the applicants and we'll call them and we'll vet them. We'll do that for a bit on this. You know. <laughs> That would actually be funny. That would be great. All right. And we'll make it happen. There we go. Just solving problems for the world. That's all we can do. Should we take another one? Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who we got on the line today? Well, it's about time you guys picked up. I'm trying to reach about your car's extended warranty. Oh, Hmm. I knew I should have called you back on that. How's it going, fella? Well, it's going good. Who are we talking to? You're talking to Ike. I'm a repeat caller. Ike. What's up, Ike? What's going on? Thanks for well, calling back. I got, a couple qu- I got a couple questions for you, boy. Okay. So a while ago, last spring, I gave you guys a call about a wedding day. And I gave Miles a lot of, a lot of uh, heckling. And I just want to apologize to Miles 
if he's listening. He I'm is listening. Uh, Continue on. Yeah, I'm sorry, Miles. I, I, Miles, I was harsh on you the last time. Why? Well, that means a lot. Um, I, I'm I th- sorry. I but, think time but heals everything, I, so I forgive you. And well, hold on, no. So I called about a wedding date a long time ago, and one person reached out. All right, and uh, I just moved in with her, and on our, our first date, I gave her a miles hoodie and she loves the goddamn hoodie. wait a second <laughs> wait, back this on. train up you're the guy who called a little while ago about needing a date to a wedding is that you yes sir and we, that and, was me and did we um have you put your information out here and, and somebody reached out to you yeah, but only one. So I am kind of upset with your callers. I mean, no one else reached out to her. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So wait, you're <laughs> dating her and you're still upset about this? <laughs> uh, and, and it's one of them grudges that, you know, I can only hold for so long. I, I was only going to hold it until you guys picked up the phone again. Okay. So hold on. Someone actually reached out because you were on the podcast. You guys went on a date and you now live together. Is that what you said? Correction. My my oh. She messaged me. She messaged me the day that podcast came out. I was at work, and about I was I would say about a couple months. I would say two months later, I flew up and we had our first date, and then right before Halloween, just moved in with her. Miles, we're matchmakers, oh my dude. God. Matches made in. Not heaven. Uh, that. So you had to fly to her. Where did you fly from and to? Well, that's the good part. I was living in Texas, and she is in the the very controversial part of the Midwest. Illinois. Some would call St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. She's right on. She's right on the line. I think. I don't mm. think Missouri. Could belongs in the midwest but i'm glad she's not here she would fight me on that yeah i think missouri's in the midwest yeah we uh, need we'll take anyone we can get right okay so you fly up there then you fall in love is what it sounds like so did you move to st louis i did okay i moved in with her this is a double bagger here i know we found love and we brought more people to the midwest charlie yeah plus we found them an apartment so that's pretty cool too um, okay, so what? How's what? it going? How is the dating with this so gal far, going? Well, so far she hasn't killed me yet. That's good. That is good. Yeah, it's been pr- it's been pr- it's been pretty good. You know, it was long distance for a while, then just decided to move up. So, what do you like better, long distance or short distance? <laughs> I think price-wise, it even though, because plane tickets are expensive. I wasn't asking about the price. <laughs> How about relationship-wise? Because sometimes it's easier oh, being, you know. I, oh, I thought you were putting a mo- Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah. You know how they say distance makes the heart grow fonder? Well, when you're in the same house, that, that, that distance goes away, and that's the true test right there. <laughs> Nah, things have been going real good, real good, and so far, I'm not sure if I'm liking the winters, even though I am from Wisconsin, but, you know, a uh, couple of years without snow, and I'm kind of used to it, so I'm not not a huge fan of the snow we got. Okay, so, so you are what I would call a success story here on the Belly Dub Podcast. I want, we, we just had a, I, I would, we just had a caller who seemed a little frustrated looking for us to help them find love. What advice would you give out to all those listeners out there that are looking for love? And now that you've found it, what advice would you give them? Get off the app, find creative ways to meet people. And even if it's over a podcast or in your backyard, I mean, just get off the internet for God's sake. (laughs) That's some good advice. Yeah. But don't shut off the podcast. Keep that going. But everything yeah, else on yeah. the internet. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. We are not oh. we're not offering titillating pictures. Uh we're offering, you know, 
audio titillation, and there's a difference in that. Right, and 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 the thing is, if if uh, she ever gets on the podcast, which we've tried for countless hours and whatnot to try and get on, and because I've had a couple, I've had a couple guys reach out to see if it works, and I just tell them it did. Um, so I don't know. Um, What's really going on with the dating site? I mean, I had to call a podcast to find the one. Dude, uh, this is like, did we just stumble on a new part of our show? I think we did. And now that I'm thinking about it, I forgot we should have asked Sam for her email, but we're getting her a billboard. We're getting so her. Be yeah. Fine. yeah. So. We are. We, we, it, we need to make it our mission to do exactly what we did here, to hook up those who have, who can't be hooked up in the traditional sense. And by the way, that's a lot of people. You know it, what? Welcome to the anti-apps podcast. Anti-apps. Screw uh, the apps. Uh, anti- uh, also, can I circle back? You asked me um, what what advice I would give. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry. Another piece of adv- Another the last piece of advice I would take is get on a plane. <laughs> the person you might love is in another state. Or drive. <laughs> or drive, you know. Yeah. Get mo- way. I think the moral story is get moving. Uh-huh. Good things come yeah, to those who moving. move. You're not going to find anyone swiping on the on the app. You know what I mean? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Get on a train and get in that so, dining car, you know? You never know. We'll, planes, we'll... trains, and automobiles. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I sure. guess that trains is true. Horses, too. Um, there's no judgment. Donkey. Rollerblades. No, no judgment. Heelys. Yeah. Ice skates. Ice skates. Heelys on ice. Snow machines. Sure. That's the lesson I like here. It, I like it, man. Well, we're really happy for you. We I, are. This is great news. Yeah. Before we let you go, is there anything else that we can uh, help you with? Did well, you... I had a couple. I oh, had a couple questions. So Miles one, didn't even want to get to the questions. We know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got two questions. So sure. We we noticed that Charlie, you have a couple of shows coming up in, in spring here in, in Wisconsin. Yeah. And I'm I might try and convince her to go with me. Uh huh. But if things keep going the way that they're going, oh for fuck's what sake! What are the chances I could I could maybe steal your thunder for a couple of seconds to maybe maybe consider the idea of proposing to her? Holy smokes! This is serious. What 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 would that go okay with your show, or would that take away from your thunder? Trust me. It would be fine in the show. <laughs> I would welcome a proposal. Trust me, Charlie's already having trouble coming up with material, yeah, so this should fill his this hour. No will problem. will be good. By 18 minutes, he'll spend on this. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> let me just say my hour is going fine, <laughs> but I would always welcome a proposal. Um, and there's a backstory to it, Charlie. There's a great backstory. Now, I got to I I wouldn't I'd be a little remiss if I didn't throw out a a cautionary flag here. You know, given my history, marriage ain't something you want to rush into. But a proposal is fine. So you can propose (laughs) and there's no financial obligations there. Just make sure it's a long engagement. okay? All right, I'll make sure. I'll make sure it's a real long engagement. There we go. Well, that's why. Yeah, so I said if things if things keep going the way that they're going, maybe I'll have to convince her and we'll have to find tickets or something. One way to get up there, but yeah, no. You look, know, if you I, to, I, 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 go ahead. I'll hook you up with tickets if you decide that's what you guys want to do. If you want to come all the way up to Wisconsin, you you let us know. Email us. Um, at um shit what's the email again <laughs> bellied up pod bellied up pod at gmail.com, at gmail.com. and uh right, i put it in my i put it in my uh my notes there okay yeah. i put it in my roller deck okay I like that. He's an old school guy. No yeah. apps, no contacts, no. just a Rolodex. Just walking around with a Rolodex. Well, and a I had pack. to call a podcast. I- 
I'm too nervous to get back out in the dating world, so I might as well just keep her. <laughs> there you go. That's always a good reason to get married. So you don't got to have to do any right, more dating. Right. I like that. <laughs> well, yep, man, this yep, is this yep. is awesome. I'm excited for you. This is moving quick. Yeah. And uh, Charlie, I think that that's going to be a fun little event at one of your shows. I mean, it'll be fun for me. Ike, you, you might want to make sure your fiance kind of maybe knows something like this might be coming. Um, I mean, she won't listen to the podcast. That was actually one of our date things when we were long distance. Every Thursday when the podcast come out, we would have date night and listen to the podcast together. And wait, now she doesn't listen to the podcast, dude, because this is going to be out there. She's going to listen to it. Oh, ain't no way she'll listen to it. Okay. Well, she's we... too busy working. Yeah. We're both too busy working. All right. Yeah. Good to know. We I have... know she won't. I know she won't listen. Okay. All right. She listened and she found what she needed. And then cool. Like, well, that sounds so. good. That sounds good. Um, yeah, man. Good luck with the relationship and let us know if it progresses to that point. Oh, we'll do it. And, and one last thing, if it comes to it, uh, are either of you, uh, Ordained I knew that was coming. Yeah, Miles is. I am not, but with that, Miles hey, is. If you can get it to the finish line, we can have that discussion. All right. All right. Well, I figured it would be a a full circle thing if you know we met on the podcast or you guys and all that crap. Well, Might she's still got to say full, yes, there, Mister. So yeah, she got to well, say yes. I know. She, I know she will. Okay. I know she will. She would have. She would have said it after the first, after the second date. Okay. Wow. Some confidence, Ike. I like so, it. All right. Yeah, well, she's got a lot of it. All right. Well, good luck. We look forward to uh, Charlie letting you propose at a show. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll, I'll have to email her. Make sure email him. Yeah. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. I'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to email him once I know and if I can get her butt up there too. So bit of a hike, but not too bad. All right. Well thanks for calling in, man. We're really happy for you and uh good luck. Have a great one, you two. So watch out for deer and tell your folks I says hi. All right. Really Sounds good, good Ike. Bye bye now. I can't believe it worked. I can't believe that worked either. I mean, I was honestly starting to give up on some of our. Uh, I mean, yeah, I was like, oh, send us your email. No, send us your email. Oh my god, I you got to make sure we're getting Instagram handles and the whole shebang. Seriously, Miles, like this is that was a perspective changing call for me. It really was. Like, think about it. Like, this could be like the New York Times could do a story on us. People sick of dating apps. How are they finding love? The Bellied Up Podcast. This could be our thing, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we're just sure we're just sitting here, sitting at at a bar, drinking. But if we're doing like a public service, I mean, game changer. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Me too. Let's take another caller. Real good. Charlie. Yes, Miles. Have you ever been at work and maybe hurt yourself? Maybe a paper cut? Maybe when you're working at Auntie Annie's, uh, you maybe burned yourself on the fryer? Actually, at Annie Ann's, I burnt myself on the hot pans on a daily basis wouldn't it have been nice to know mr nicolay yeah at that time yeah he would have been like don't tell him you were high at work you know <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been yeah yeah it's yep. probably what it was said um but anyways <laughs> if you guys are injured at uh can you, is it injured at work or is it like personal I, I, injury i think it's at like work, in a car crash both both I'm getting told hey if you're injured at all uh, you know, and, and and it involves any sort of injury. It just says injured, right? So if you're injured, shoot, give him a call. He'll tell you if he can help you or not. We're exactly. not the experts. one 855 Nicolay, ladies and gentlemen. We're just here to tell you where to go, and then he can handle the rest of it, right? That's that, that that's what they're going to get. And don't worry if you forget what we just said. Just keep your eyes open when you're riding on the roads, not just for deer, also for the Nicolay billboards. You'll you can't see them. miss them. No, you can't. No, or the deer. The one thing I should think you should add to is, is um, 
billboards is like a little sparkle on the top of his bald head. Yeah. Russell would look gray with a nice little sparkle. Dude, you know what else I was going to say? I think in one of the uh, one of the sunglass reflections, there should be a little deer jumping. They're like a reindeer. No, Fly, flying. No, no, no. Above the trees. Well, that could be fun too for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking of an actual. He should, he should change his beard to white during Christmas. So he looks cool. like like a cool Santa. Man, we should. We'll we should. pitch him to that. We'll pitch yeah, him these next ideas. time. Yep. Next time. Yeah. Yep. Well, guys, if you're injured, go to nicolaylaw.com. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to? Hello, this is Aiden from Milwaukee. Nathan from Milwaukee? Is that what you said? Aiden from Milwaukee. Aiden, are you on speaker in a large room right now? Sounds like you're doing renovations or taking a deuce. Ah, no, I'm just leaving my apartment, Billy, but I'll get off real quick of uh, my AirPods. Okay. Oh, that was your AirPods. Right, is that, That's better. Is yeah. that much better? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Aiden, welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Belly on up. What's on your mind? All righty. So I'm a bouncer at a bar in downtown Milwaukee. And um, I'm looking to find out um, what to do when someone says that they're going to mess me up. Why did he say he was going to mess you up? Yeah. Well, there's been a few times where guys will look at me and I'll ask them to politely leave. And then they'll tell me that they're going to mess me up. And every single time it happens, I don't know how to react to it because I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. I'm also a big dude. So it's like I could handle it, but I prefer not to. Well, well, I actually think that that's the type of person who should be a bouncer, right? The person who's in power should not be the one who wants all the power. It's right, true. they usually make the better, more uh-huh. rational decisions. If you're a bouncer who doesn't like to fight, that's a good thing because your first option is going to be to de-escalate things before things break out into a fight. So I think that that is what you got going for you. Yeah, I, and I do really I want to echo that uh, sentiment from Miles, and, and also say that if you're a guy who talks crap to a bouncer, we all know that you're not packing a lot of heat, you know, <laughs> that you, you got sort oh. of, you got the cocktail weenie going and you're trying to impress one of the gals and you think that your bluster might add inches to your bratwurst. And, and by bratwurst, I may, I mean the cocktail, um, shrimp, concoction. shrimp, shrimp cocktail. Yeah. A little shrimpy cocktail. And th- that's all they're doing. Okay. And, oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> The type that can fit in a Bloody Mary, you could say. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And they've dealt with this their whole life and they don't know how to do it. And they've got alcohol now fueling their insecurity. And that's what they do. They And they know they can talk all this smack to you because you're not going to do anything. You're smarter than that. And you are also not drunk. But, you know, they just want to look big for their um, for the, some gal or their buddies. I mean, Have you ever experienced someone, though, when they maybe threatened you a little bit that you were kind of like, ah, oh, shit, this guy might actually mess me up? Because, you know, there's like the big talkers, ah! the, the shrimp cocktail guys that Charlie's talking about. Yeah. But I feel like once in a while you get a big old uh, former college football player or something that you're like, oh, God, this could maybe be not so good for me. Have you ever had that happen? Uh, I personally have not. I know that there are situations that arise like that all the time on Water Street, but my, my, me, myself, kind of known for um, using a quote from one of our, uh, I would guess I'd say clients, but um, she said that I'm the type to always be smiling, even when it's probably not best to be smiling. So even in those situations where they're like, oh, we're going to mess you up, I'm just all smiles. So a lot of times it's, there's no guys that I'm actually too afraid of there are guys that i know would cause me a problem but nothing that could endanger my life type thing gotcha what usually happens they say you're gonna mess you up then what happens um so the the two instances in particular that i'm thinking of where i've actually had some concerns with it is in one instance all i did was i I sat down everything that i had in my hands is in like you know it's like all star jobs pick up glasses and take up the trash and all that um so i set all that stuff down and then i walked him out uh you know putting my hands on his shoulders just kind of walked him out put it uh kind of nicely 
But then the other situation was me uh, having to calm him down and tell him that he's not going to mess anyone up today. Um, and luckily, I had another bouncer there with me. But Man, you guys got a thankless job. So my hat is off to you. Truth be told, um, I enjoy the work. I like to be out there with the fellas, interacting with the crowd and everything else. Um, so it's kind of like my, my part-time job that keeps on repaying me by keeping me around people of my same age, but also like making sure that I'm not going out getting hammered every single Friday, Saturday, Sunday type thing. Well, that's yeah. good. That's a whole new perspective on it. I like, I like you a lot. I think you got your head on right now. Let's get back to what should you do if someone says they're going to mess you up? I think Charlie and I have a few things and tactics that you can try that should deescalate the situation. Now, number one that comes to mind, guy tells he's going to mess you up. I want you to take off your pants. <laughs> Nothing will. Have you ever attempted that? I haven't. Luckily, I've never been in the need for this scenario, but I got this in my repertoire. You know, I if <laughs> belt off, pants off. What's a guy? Does a guy really want to get really close to a guy who's not wearing pants, especially when all I'm wearing is a jock strap? That is true. Good point, Miles. Don't forget the jock strap. He's not going to come anywhere near you. So that would be one tactic you would right. try. Charlie, what else would you try? Well, um, you, do you have water balloons? You know, like on me personally or just at the bar? Yeah, I, I, at the bar, I would have a bucket of water balloons, and I would have uh, those water balloons um, filled up with, um, do you remember Gak <laughs> from Nickelodeon? I know, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know Gak? Mm-mm. What is it? Mm-mm. You don't even know what it is. No, I, I <laughs> don't know. I know exactly what Gak is, guys. I mean, this is like. Are you talking of, about slime? Yeah, I'm talking about slime, but they used to sell Gak like when you were watching Nickelodeon. I as don't a remember kid. that. I, maybe that was your generation. I, I feel like there's like this lonely song, like all amount of lonely people as the camera zooms in on me as nobody knows what Gak is. So you want to throw slime at these guys. I don't know if that's going to deescalate the scenario. I'm spitballing here. Okay, well, like, okay, I'm going to piggyback off of that. What you could do is when everyone comes in, they get a water balloon. And then if there's someone causing trouble... You do the old, uh, you take a page out of the biblical times and you just, everyone, you announce to the, the crowd that this person needs to leave and everyone throws their water balloon at them. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's kind of a fun uh, thing. Yeah. You know what? Well, is he going to fight everyone in the bar? You can't do that. Yeah, that's true. Um, and nothing's worse than being really drunk and pissed off and sopping wet. That's. Just uh, you don't want that, especially in Milwaukee. It can get cold. Another thing you can do, you can have a flashlight on you. And if he actually does come close to you, just put the flashlight right in his eyeballs. That'll (laughs) that'll stun him real good. You know? Yeah. And then that's also you. You're just like as the as the flashlights come out, like, oh, geez, I think I lost my keys somewhere. Are they in your eyes? Nope. Don't look like it. Um, there's got to be more. There's uh, got to be more things. I think the other thing, nothing will de-escalate some, f- well, not faster, but slower than making someone wait a while before they mess you up. So I'm going to mess you up. You go, okay, awesome. We're going to do that. But hold on a sec. I got to show you this walleye I caught a few weeks back. And then you're going to pull out your phone, Charlie. Ah, yeah. And you're going to have to look through your phone for 45 minutes looking for that fish pick because it's hard to find on that camera roll of yours. That's true. And once 45 minutes goes by, he's going to be forget why he was even mad. Yeah. 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 Have you ever... Have you ever uh, tried that, showing someone a picture of... Like, if you want someone to leave a conversation... Just pull up your phone and start looking for walleyes. They're, they're going to be begging to go at that point. Oh, I think I'll have to try that then. I'm more of a bluegill guy myself. Even better. That Dude, works. Even better. Like, like, Miles, let's role play it. Like, uh, you be the drunk guy. Hey, man, what? I'm going a, I'm to a mess you up. Yeah, no, you are going to mess yeah, me up. Yeah, I am. Yeah, no, no, no. You, I mean, you, you want to go right now? I, you, can, how about we go? But before we go, yeah. uh, can I just show you this bluegill that I caught? 
Well, it's, it's about the size. Of my, I, no, no, no. You're going to mess me up. I mean, try, look okay. at you. Look okay. at you. You, yeah. you. you clearly have, you know, big muscles. Yeah, thank you. Huge, I know I do. I work you, out. Huge dong and, and and all that. But but before we get to it, could I just show you this walleye? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Bluegill. Bluegill. Jeez, I forgot the species. Hang on. I'm finding it. Yeah. I, I'm that, finding it. I mean, it. that's fine. I, I Sure. Yeah. So I'm looking here. Oh, wait. Oh, don't look at my phone, please. Uh, uh, sorry. I mean, it, it's okay. Uh, when when did I catch that bluegill? Was it? Hey, Does Jerry? anyone know when he caught this bluegill? Then boom, all of a sudden he's forgot about why he's mad. And he's now trying to focus on getting you to show the fish in, and so that he can get back to what he was talking about. But then he doesn't even remember what he was talking about because he's hammered. Yeah. He hung up. That's not a bad move. No, no, that's a great move. But the problem is, is what if we actually find the bluegill pick? Oh, you just, you take then seriously. Then you ask him if he's got any bluegill picks. Yeah, it's it's a ch- classic misdirect. You know, do you ever watch Shark Week? Oh, every year. Okay, so you know when you're scuba diving and a shark is going at you to, like fast, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, you know? And, and kind of a drunk guy at the bar is kind of like a shark, you know? They're like big idiots, you know? All you got to do is put your hand out on their nose because their noses are real sensitive and then, and then redirect them. Redirect. That's what these guys... And they're really easy to redirect because they have, you know, just a few things on their mind trying to show that they're the big man and, uh, you know, probably getting the next drink. Trying to flex their dorsal fins and all that. What's that? Trying to flex their dorsal fins and all that. Trying to flex their dorsal fins. Yeah. I got got one more advice piece. Sorry. No, no. Workshopping it in my head. We're just getting the ideas going here, Miles. Um, Another option is you need to tell him, yes, we're going to fight. Let's do it. We actually have a fighting pit right through this yes. door. Yeah. And it's just going to be either either it's going to go outside and it's going to be a fenced area with a with like a case of water and you let him go out first and it locks from the inside <laughs> and he just goes out into this pit. You lock the door and now he just has to sit there and drink water and sober up and think about what he's done. Or you could use like a broom closet that locks from the outside. Now, I will say I'm going to caution this. That could be um, a a wrongful imprisonment, which is a felony. But, you know, we'll get to those details. Okay, you make it like an escape room. That's oh, that's it. That's yeah, the, it. That's the it. The drunk escape room. Yes. So yeah. if a guy's getting a little feisty, he wants to fight you, you go, all right, the fighting pit is right through these doors. You get him in there, you lock him in there, and he has the key in the room, but it's an escape room, and now he has to go through all of the things to unlock, and hopefully it takes him about an hour to sober up, not be as mad, the whole thing. That's a great idea. That's wonderful. The other thing you could do. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I kind of feel like an escape room might make him a little bit more mad, you know? But now he's mad at the room, not you. Yeah. What's he going to do? And and you never know. He may get out and be like, I think I can do it faster. Let me get back in there. You know, he might love it. (laughs) And then he goes for another round. Yeah. You're going to make sure there's no sharp objects in this room. Probably pretty padded as well. And then you let that guy go. Oh, of course. I think the escape room's the, the best idea. The you know, lastly, what you can do is have a big boom box out there. And uh, as soon as someone says they want to fight, you can like start it. And it's like, uh, you know, the wrestling. You ever watch WrestleMania? You can get that song going like in the left in the blue corner. We have a five foot four shrimp dick motherfucker (laughs) ready to fight the big bouncer. And then you got a guy there whose job it is to just be the announcer and, uh, you know, kind of roast the guy what he's wearing. And he's looking around for who to fight, but it's just a dude in the window upstairs, you know? Yeah, you just put him in a room with a mirror and then he'll just start fighting himself. Yeah, that's good. That's actually another good point. But yeah. Have you ever been like mad and then like you go to the bathroom and you're kind of like, you like look yourself in the mirror and you're like, God, I look like an idiot for how mad I am. And you punch the mirror. No, you just now you are because you, 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 you now are seeing that you look ridiculous. Yeah. Get him in a room with a bunch of mirrors. That'll calm him down. Yeah. 
You literally mirror him. Yeah. Yeah. You literally mirror so him. The escape room filled with mirrors is the move. Oh, that's it. Escape room filled with mirrors. I mean, this now is becoming a horror film, and I'm liking it more and more. I was, I was going to say, this makes me sound like I'm going to like play a game with them or something. Exactly. That sounds fun. Not fighting. That's so true. All right. So that's it. You just got to convince the bar to have an escape room, and you're good to go, dude. I will pose all the questions to, to the bar, and hopefully we get it done. All right. Look at that, Charlie. Boom. All right. I love it, man. Keep doing well, uh, God's work out there. Um, not enough people are as grateful for the bouncers as they should be. No, so, we uh, appreciate your service and, and glad you're having fun with it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you both for the advice. Absolutely, man. Thanks for calling in. All right. Tell your folks that says hi. Yeah, watch for you. deer and drunks. I'll try my best. All right. Bye-bye. What a good guy. Yeah, uh, you know, I when he was calling talking about that, I I hate party bars. I can't get into it. That's because you're 36 years old, Charlie. Do you like party bars, Miles? I did when I was 25. I'm old. I'm old. I like. But bars. what a great way to end it! And it actually reminds me. We always talk about tipping your bartender. Yeah. Once in a while, maybe throw a couple uh, bucks the bouncer's way, or at least give him a, a we thanks. Sh- we should have. Uh- we should have talked to him about that, about tipping the, the bouncer. Next bouncer we get, I think we should get bouncer tips. Although we all know that bouncers are taking a little scratch to let people in the door. Yeah. You oh, know? Yeah. 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 So they're getting tipped. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's supposed to be an $8 cover charge. They charge 10, you know, the whole thing. But at least thank your your bouncer. Thank your bouncer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guys, that was another good episode of the Belly It Up podcast. As always, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget your tip, your bartender, and your bouncer. And watch out for drunks. See you next time, guys. Love you guys.